Hi everyone, I'm making a, I'm, well, I'm redoing these videos unfortunately, so if I stutter a bit, yeah, okay. So, basically, this, is, this video is in response to the government's whole uh, internet censorship deal, the Great Australian Firewall, which, <laughs> a lot of bull, if you ask me. Anyway, one of the main problems is a lot of parents aren't really willing to go out and protect their families network or their internet connection and they would much rather the so-called government put up something that's going to cause nothing but problems for everyone else. Let me put it this way, it's like uh, taking books out from the library and making them not available to everybody. You can still go to bookshops, but you take them out of the bookshops, there's always going to be a way for people to get that information. What the government want to do is they want to block specific websites but then again, there are going to be a whole bunch of other websites and there are other ways of getting it. So the whole idea is just stupid. If you do want to protect your children or if you're running a business and you need to monitor and also block certain things from the internet or limit internet access, you can use an old computer. All you need. Well, one of the things you need, you also need an extra network card, a modem and if you have a wireless network you're going to have to have a separate uh, access point because if you have your internet coming straight through through your modem here and set it to the wireless network it's going to completely bypass this thing. Anyway, the way the, the way the setup works, which is, this is my personal one, here's a gateway to the internet. This device here, my modem, is linked up to my firewall, which is then linked to a switch, which is that here. Also, sometimes you might have your uh, access point there as well, wireless access point, and then that's linked. Then your switch is linked to the rest of the network. Now, theory is, this is how it works: you sitting at your computer, your iPod, whatever, and you request a website. It comes to the switch, it comes to this thing. If that particular site is blocked, it doesn't go any further. If that site isn't blocked here. It then goes through your modem and out to the internet. Now this does one of two things. This does make your this does increase your security a bit. It also uh, can save you money. In Australia, for people overseas, they might not have this, but here we have some pretty hectic bandwidth limitations. This is also a complete joke. The government's talking about faster internet. We don't need faster internet. We need greater download limitations. Now you might think that. Oh, well, you know, limiting us for blah, blah, blah. What if a child is doing research and they blow, say, a month's worth of uh, bandwidth in just an hour? And you might say, oh, that's not going to happen. Well, you'll actually be surprised if they have to sit there and watch some documentaries. Well, it's going to go through a lot of uh, bandwidth. Anyway, you might be thinking that, oh, I can't set one of these up, it's too difficult. If you can read, understand, and watch these tutorials, which I'm going to make, you should be quite successful. You're mostly looking at about a day, day and a half, at the most, to set something like this up. Now, you can use any old computer. This is a rather old Pentium. I believe it's a Pentium 2 computer. It has an onboard Ethernet, which is a network card. You need two of those. And I'm just slung an extra network card, which you should be able to pick up for already $10, $15 if you buy it from a shop. A lot cheaper if you buy it from someone. Or oh, you've got some lying around. I also have over here what's called a, it's a server, basically. It runs something called FreeNAS, which is, uh, well, I can use it for backing up data. I can use it for hosting data. You do all sorts of things with it. It's very useful. It's not on at the moment, but yeah. That's just basically a huge storage box. <clears throat> okay, so the benefits to using this is number one, the software is free, so you usually have to go for a forum to get the information. Number two, <clears throat> it doesn't require a monitor. My power bill is only about $200 a quarter, and the most thing I end up spending money on is the hot water system. So having a, a low end computer, an old one sitting in the background somewhere, it's not going to do too much. If you're in a family or if you're in a business in a situation and you need to prevent other people apart from yourself getting access to it, use a good strong password. And uh, the best way I can think about it is a Faraday cage. 
But if you do uh, put a computer into some sort of box, you've got to make sure that you have plenty of airflow, so a lot of holes in it, which would be a very good idea. The reason why I do this is that you prevent your little kids, you prevent people or your kids from getting in there, fixing it so they can pretty much access it for free. You, if you do use a metal cage, do not put your access point inside. Your access point, like my switch there, that can be outside, that can be out in the open, it doesn't matter. I mean, if the kids link directly up to your switch or they replace the switch and hook their laptop up to it, they're still going to have all the limitations. What you don't want them access to, but are mainly is the monitor in this box. You want to make sure physical access, or even locking into a room might do it. Or a cupboard, but you've got to make sure you get proper, proper airflow, otherwise it's going to completely kill it. Now, you might be thinking, well, uh, you know, it's probably going to your firewall is going to need to do a lot of information, a lot of, uh, it's going to need to be powerful. It doesn't. This is an old one, you can use an even older system for it. All it does is it says uh, it reads everything that's coming into a uh, data that comes through here. Let's say someone outside tries to access my network, they get past my file, they get past my modem, they come here, and the port they're accessing is blocked. They won't get past this thing unless, of course, they get your personal inform the uh, information they need and bypass it and do all sorts of hectic things. But you can actually prevent that sort of stuff in just a couple of settings. Now. You'll notice that I do have a keyboard here. Two reasons, just in case I can hook up a monitor, which I have sitting on the desk, or if in emergency time I need to shut down the computer quickly. You just hit Control, Alt, Delete three times, the system shut down, shuts down, it makes a bit noise, and then power turns off. And then when you need to turn on, you just hit the power button, which is here. Flick it on, boots up. So, we're looking at a very cheap, very effective way of blocking websites. Now this is pretty much similar to what the Australian government wants to set up, which, may, which allows you to block particular content. But you can install logs, and those logs can basically go and say, okay, this computer access this stuff at this time. If the person shouldn't have been doing it, you can basically go to them and say, hey, what are you doing? Or you can actually block what they're accessing. Very useful. Anyway, I'm going to cut it off here. And if you're interested in learning more, uh, I'll recommend you subscribe or you keep looking at my account because in the next couple of weeks what I'll be doing is instructing you on the basics of getting a system, putting it out, installing it, and off you go. This thing's actually rather silent because there's only one fan in there and that fan barely rotates, so yeah, it's pretty good. Anyway.